So cash budget. So that's the document we're producing. The first part of our business plan, budget. That's not right. Cash budget. And we'll always put in the, the period that it relates to. Okay. Okay. And it's uh, for the three months. Ended. And it's ended at the end of December, I suppose, this year, uh, 31st of December, uh, 2000. And I suppose we've got to make a name. I'm not very imaginative, so we just call the name of our business. Let's say we're going to form a company for this, and we're going to call our company XYZ Limited. Best I can do. Okay, XYZ. We put a, a line underneath that. That's our heading. So now we know anyone reading this, they know who it is, whose cash budget it is, and what period of time we're talking about. Okay, and so on. Okay, so with a cash budget, we're going to do it on a monthly basis. Okay, so we're going to do a column, if you, it's like a table here we're going to do. So we're going to do uh, October, November, December. There are three months. So we're going to look at the cash flows. Remember, we're talking about liquidity here. So we're talking about cash flows in and cash flows out. And we're going to have a column then for the total for the three months. Okay, so there's our three months and the total three months together. And everything's in money. So we put in a currency symbol. Okay, so this cash budget itself then is also in three parts. Uh, so the first part of our cash budget is very simple. It's a very simple document. As I said, most many people do this. Uh, cash in. So what cash are we going to get in? What sources of cash do we have? Well, if you look back at the limited amount of information we collected about our business, there's only really two sources of cash. And one is the, from the customer. When we sell the customer our goods, uh, they'll pay. But a, a month late but also we're all going to put money into this business into this company we're going to invest the five of us whoever we are are going to invest uh, our money in the business so um, and we said we're going to put in 2000 so i suppose the first thing we're going to say is cash in we call it capital or equity and this is money from us. Now we're going to remember in business, whether it's a company or not a company, we always treat the business as being separate from us, the owners. So if we're putting money in the business, it's cash in as far as the business is concerned. So when will we do this? When will we put the money in? Well, the, the business is going to need it up front. So we're going to put this in on the 1st of October. And that's all we're putting in. So we won't put in any more capital after that. So that's a total of 20,000 then for the three months. Okay, so that goes in, in in October, the first month. And then we're going to sell goods. And we're going to sell these goods. Now, how much are we going to sell the goods for? We're going to sell the goods for 20 euros. Okay, and in the first month, we're going to sell 1,000 units. Second month, 2,000 units. Third month, 3,000 units. So our sales in October, will be 1,000 units multiplied by 4 euros the price. No, multiplied by 20 euros the price. So that's 20, our sales in October will be 20,000. But because we're selling anything we sell in October, we were giving one month's credit, so we won't expect to get paid till November. So we won't receive any money from our customers in October, okay? And anything we sell in October to 1,000 units we get paid in November. So we're going to receive 20,000 in November from our customers. How do we calculate that? Well, it's a thousand units, okay? And a thousand units multiplied by four euros. No, sorry, multiplied by 20 euros is the price. So that's how we get to 20,000, okay? It's the sales of October. And what will we what will the sales in November be? Okay, the sales in November, well, we're going to sell two thousand items for twenty euros each. That's twenty thousand. But of course, when we sell them in November, the customers will expect a credit, and so they won't pay us 
if we're lucky they won't pay us till um, till december so they're going to pay us forty thousand in december how do we get that well that's the two thousand items two thousand units we're going to sell and multiplied by 20 euro so that's how we get to 40. now what about december sales then in december we said we're going to sell three thousand items okay and at 20 euros a go that's sixty thousand so that's will be the sales of December, all right. That's what we're going to sell. But the cash won't come in until January of next year. OK, and we're not doing a cash budget for next year. We're only doing a cash budget for these three months. So the only cash coming in, in these three months is the 20 coming in from customers in November and the 40 in December. And at the end of December, we will be owed money by our, by our customers. Our customers will owe us. The, uh, for the 3,000 we're going to sell in December. And that, of course, will be 60,000. But that 60,000 is a debt owed to us at the end. The cash will not have been received. So we call that debt debtors. And it'll be one of our assets that we're going to put in our balance sheet, our projected balance sheet when we come to it. So that's that, okay? So we can add up then the, all the cash we're going to get from our customers, 20 plus 40 is 60. Okay, so that's that. There's no other cash coming into this business. There's our cash in. So we know now, which is useful information when you think about it, that we know now in advance that we're due to get in 20,000 in October. And that's from ourselves, okay? The company will get another 20,000 from the customers in the next month in November, and we'll get 40,000 the following month in December. And that's a total of 14, or is it? It's 80,000. Now, that is kind of useful, okay? If you're running a business, it's good to know in advance, okay, uh, how much money you expect to get in into your business. Okay, that's the first part of the business plan. The second part, as you probably guess, we just simply call cash out. So a very simple doc document, cash out. So if we look again at the information that we presented a little bit earlier as to what the what, what cash flows are going to go out well there's a, a few things that we're going to spend money on the first one is what we might call purchases purchases has a particular meaning in accounting and finance purchases means buying either you know buying something that you will sell on or something materials that you will incorporate into a product and then sell on okay so where the, the raw materials we're talking about here, the purchases, purchases of raw materials. And so how much will that be? Well, we're going to have to make a thousand of these things in the first month. OK, and the material cost is uh, four euros each. So that should be four thousand. So how do we get that? I just put that you don't. If you were doing this in an exam or for real, you wouldn't bother with what's in the brackets here. So I'm just going to put in there a thousand units multiplied by uh, four euros this time, the material cost going into each item. And we're, we're assuming we're not building up stock. We're only making what we need to sell in that particular uh, month. A bit unrealistic maybe, but okay. Uh, the next one, the next month then is, so that's, I have, uh, sorry, I have uh, 1,000 by four and I have 40,000 in there. That's not good. So I have to knock off a, a zero, okay. So that's that done. And in the next month, then, we're going to have to pay out for materials 8,000. Why is that? Well, because we're going to have to, we're going to sell and make um, 2,000 items. And it's going to cost us, in terms of material, 4 euros. Okay. The last month, then, we're going to, we're going to make, we're going to need to make 3,000 items, and each one costs, and the materials of each cost us 4 euros, so uh, 3 fours are 12, so it looks like it's 12,000. And again, I put in brackets how we calculated that, it's 3,000 multiplied by 4 euros. Okay, now we get the, the amount of, for purchases for the three, for the three months together, and what does that add up to 24,000? So that's it. That's our purchase cost. That's one of our main costs, I suppose, in the business. Labor costs are next. This is the money we're going to pay ourselves. 
and we, we, we agreed this in advance, so we know for sure that's what we're going to get out of the business for working every hour. You know, in the business, you have to work a lot, I suppose, to get it started, and that's uh, 24,000 as well, coincidentally. The other next cost then is the overhead cost. These are the costs of other other costs like rent, insurance, telephone bills, anything you can think of, marketing maybe, all sorts of costs that we might have to incur. Uh, and we we worked that out uh, and we, we knew we know well we don't know but we we, we expect that this is what it's going to cost. Eleven thousand and eleven thousand. And that adds up to thirty one thousand. <clears throat> And anything else that we have to pay money out for, and there is, there's the equipment. So we're going to buy the second-hand equipment. So we're going to need to spend money on that. And we need it up front, I suppose. We need it, you know, at, at the beginning of our project, 15,000. And we're not buying any more equipment after that, so it's just 15,000. <clears throat> Okay, let's add up these comms. I, there's no other cash flows out that I can see in the first three months of our business, based on our assumptions. So we'll add up the three, these uh, four columns of figures, I suppose. Uh, if we were doing this for 12 months now, we'd have 13 columns, okay, because we'd have, uh, and normally it is for 12 months we'd be doing it. So you'd have a, a, a column for each month, 12 months, and a total column. So let's add this up. So we add up the first column, comes to 36. Next column, 27. The column for uh, December, 31. And the, the total column then, 94,000. So again, useful information. We know what we've got to spend the money on. Um, you know what I mean, each month. So, you know, it, it's useful in itself, you know, for running the business, from a managerial point of view. But of course, th this business plan, where it's going to go, of course, is we'll probably use this business plan to bring to the bank uh, when we're looking for money, or we might be looking for other investors and we, they, they'd expect to see a business plan like this. Right, the, the, the third part of this, um, of this cash budget then is as follows. is three rows of figures going across. So I'll just write them in first. The first one is open and balance. Okay, I'll just write them first before I explain it. And uh, next one is surplus. We know we said already what surplus was when there's more cash coming in than going out. And then we can also have a deficit. And we normally show the, the word deficit in brackets because to indicate a minus figure. So instead of putting a minus sign before a figure, we, we put uh, the figure in brackets. And the last uh, line or the last row of figures going across is close and balance. Now, what do we mean by these three terms? Open and balance, okay. Opening in finance and accounting relates to the beginning of the period, whether it's the beginning of a month or the beginning of a year, we talk about the, the opening balance, okay? And the balance, balance of what? What are we measuring here in this document? Well, we're measuring cash. So we've got to say, okay, well, how much cash did we have in our business at the beginning of the month, okay? Uh, surplus or deficit, I think we know for each month, do, is there more coming in than going out? That's a surplus, or is there more going out than coming in? That's a deficit. And the closing balance, closing in accounting and finance means at the end of the period, month or whatever it is, year, and balance again, balance of cash. Okay, this is a new business. Okay, so we there was nothing in the business at the beginning, so the open and balance of cash is zero. Now I know you might say, well, what about the twenty thousand we're putting in? Well, okay, well we included that in the cash in during the first month. Now we have a choice, we could either not include it where we did include it in the cash in and instead include it here if we wanted to, but we can't do both, okay? So that's basically that. So the open balance is zero. Now, what is the surplus or deficit? Well, you can see there that the, sur the cash coming in is 20, okay? We expect it to come in 20 and the cash going out 
is going to be 36. So that's not good, okay? So there's more going out than coming in. That's what we expect based on our assumptions. So we have a deficit, and the deficit, of course, is 16,000. And that's just 36 minus 20. So we're short 16,000. So we really do need to borrow money then, okay? We need to borrow at least 16,000, maybe more. Uh, <clears throat> when we see, we'll see what happens in the following months. So the closing balance, okay, if we just leave it as it is, we're going to have an overdraft of 16,000 in our in our bank if we're allowed okay so we might have to go and get a, an overdraft facility which is permission from the bank that our account can go into negative figures as uh, 16,000 okay so that's our first month done so not looking great okay so what about the open and balance then in the following month which is November well the open and balance if the closing balance in October is 16 that's at the close of business on the last day of October well okay the next month then or the next day comes around the next morning comes around nothing has changed so on the 1st of uh, November you're still going to have this be in the red if you like 16,000 so whatever's down here in one one month the closing balance of one month always becomes the open balance in the next okay so we're starting off November with a with a negative figure of 16 in our bank account. What happens in November then? Have we a surplus or deficit? Well, cash in 20,000, cash out 27. So another deficit, okay? So things are going from bad to worse. So we have a 7,000 deficit in brackets again because it's negative. And at the end of that month, we're going to be 23,000 overdrawn. So how much do we need to borrow? Well, 23, it looks like. Okay, at least 23. We'll see now, do things get better or worse? So what about December then, the 1st of December, the open balance, 23. Oops, I forgot to put brackets in here. It's a negative 23. So 23,000, we're going to start off December with a minus figure in our bank, of minus 23. Again, the closing balance of November becomes the open balance of December. <clears throat> now, have we a surplus or deficit in this month? Well, we have 40,000 coming in, 31 going out, so that's a surplus, thankfully. So we've got 9,000 positive, okay? 9,000 positive. So a surplus for the first time. So what's our balance in our bank going to be, if everything goes according to plan, 14,000 negative. Okay, so that's that. So I suppose, what this is going to tell us is okay the business we don't know anything about the profitability yet we don't know anything about the solvency but it has a liquidity problem okay it has a cash flow problem and we can solve one way to, there's a number of ways to solve a cash flow problem but one way is just simply to go out and get an overdraft of twenty three thousand, and that should 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 help us let's do the final column okay let's do the final column here um, again, the open and balance this for the three months together. Well, the open balance at the beginning of the three months is going to be the same as the open and balance at the beginning of um, at the beginning of October. So that's zero, okay. And then for the three months together, uh, the cash in is eighty, the cash out ninety four. So we get a minus fourteen. So minus 14 plus zero is minus 14. And we knew that that had to be the case, okay? Because it's at the end of December. So these two figures have to be equal to each other, okay? They have to be equal to each other because we're talking about that the same day. So we anticipate that at the end of our three months, we will have an overdraft of 14,000. So we need to go to our bank and explain the situation and ask for this uh, overdraft. Now let's say uh, we do we do that and we go to the bank and they say no okay let's say they say no we can't give you an overdraft sorry about that so how are we going to uh, is there anything else we could do okay if they don't give us an overdraft well there are a few things a few possible solutions to this liquidity problem what's causing the liquidity problem well 
I suppose what's causing the liquidity by one thing that's causing the liquidity problem is the fact that we're giving credit to our customers. Okay, so we're giving credit to our customers, which is delaying the money coming in. And our customers at the end of December owe us 60. So if there was some way we could reduce the credit terms to our customers, um, <clears throat> that would solve our liquidity problem. And, you know, ideally they would pay us cash. In other words, there'd be no credit. And if, 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 they, if there was no credit given to customers, well, that 20 there in November would come in in October. The 40 in December would come in in November. So everything would move to the left on this row. And the 60 that we're not even including and that's going to come in in January, the December sales would come in in December. And in that way, we'd have an extra 60,000 in this three month period. So, you know, that might be possible if we talk to our customers and say, listen, we're a new business, is it would it be possible that you pay us up front? Or, you know, if, they, if they're not agreeable to that, maybe two weeks credit. And if it was two weeks credit, half of this 20 would come to the left, half of this 40 would move to the left, and half of the 60 in January would move to the left. And that would solve our problem as well, because that would be an extra 20,000 uh, in uh, and that would solve our overdraft of 14. OK, sort of. OK, it might not completely solve it because we actually go to 23. Anyway, OK, what else could we do? Well, we could we could uh, to, to improve our liquidity situation, our cash flow. We noticed that the purchases were not getting any credit from our purchases. Maybe we haven't looked hard enough, okay? And maybe it might be possible that some or all of these purchases we might get credit if we if we if we look harder. So if we did get credit from our suppliers, well that four thousand there, let's say we got a month's credit, well we wouldn't pay that four thousand in October, we'd pay it in in um, November, the eight we'd pay in December, and the twelve we pay in January. So move everything to the right, and that's delaying money going out. And that would help our liquidity. A big problem uh, that's been a big source of the problems of our liquidity problem is this here: uh, the equipment. We've had to pay out fifteen thousand upfront for our equipment, and um, that's a lot of money upfront when we don't really have it. And I suppose there are alternatives to buying equipment, and that is leasing or higher purchase. So instead of paying out fifteen. We might spread the payments out over three years and maybe pay 300 a month or something like that. So it would be 300 here, uh, here and here, and that's 900 in the three months. So that would be very useful. That would solve our, our, uh, our, our liquidity problem. <clears throat> OK, so there's a number of uh, solutions to liquidity. OK, maybe I'll just write those what they are. Uh, I'll just write them down if I can do that. Let's get down a little bit. Okay, so solutions to liquidity problem. Okay, uh, I'll just put uh, to solve a liquidity a problem or a cash flow problem, this same thing. There's a number of things we can do. First one is reduce credit to customers. And uh, number two, uh, increase credit from suppliers. Okay, number three, <clears throat> uh, number three, lease the equipment. Don't buy the equipment because that's a big lump sum. Uh, lease the equipment instead and spread it out over a few years. Uh, number four, another solution to a liquidity problem is borrow. And another one is, uh, <clears throat> in other words, we just go to the bank, ask for an overdraft facility, that will solve it for us. It's, liquidity is an easy problem to solve. The other two, uh, profitability and um, profitability and solvency are more difficult, okay, particularly solvency. And the final thing we could do is we could f try and find some new investors, okay? And I'll just refer to that as a, a new equity 
because that's what when the owners put money in we could find new people to put money in or we could put more money in so a new equity investment in the business that would be more cash uh, coming in okay so we've done a fair bit here uh, so um, that's the um, that's the first part of our business plan okay and um, so what did we do let's just go back and, and just see what have we done so oops sorry we go over here okay I'll just go up here now and just recap a little bit okay so this is our first uh, video lecture uh, business planning for companies and we looked at a, a number of topics now we're not finished of course okay so we looked at a number of topics so we looked at we explained what profitability solvency and liquidity was we did a short uh, uh, comparison between what fin financial management and accounting we looked at the three components of the business plan the cash budget projected profit and loss account and projected balance sheet and we introduced this case study uh, of, a, of a business plan and we did the cash budget so we've yet to do the the next two parts and that's the solvency and the liquidity and I'm going to do those two parts in the next video in video lecture number two so Talk to you then. All the best.